So in today's video, I'm gonna take you step-by-step step on setting up your overlays inside of OBS Studio so your stream looks professional. All right, so let's go ahead and dive into my money-making machine so we can go ahead and get this all set up. So the very first thing that I want to go ahead and explain is the difference between scenes and sources. So scenes are just what they're called, right? Scenes, they're the specific scenes that you're gonna be able to utilize, like your starting soon screen, your intermission, your gameplay, your be right back, and things of that sort. And then the source are the elements that live with inside of your scenes, like your camera, the overlay, the countdown timer, alerts, music, and things of that sort. So I want to make sure that you understand the difference between those so that way you're not confused. So the very first thing that we want to do is we want to go ahead and add a scene. So we're going to go ahead and create our starting soon. So you want to go ahead and hit the plus sign and you want to go ahead and label it what you want to call it. For easy labeling, go ahead and put starting soon. So once you go ahead and do that, now you're going to have a scene selected. The next thing we want to do is we want to go ahead and start adding all these sources and elements that we have. The very first thing you want to do is you want to click this plus symbol. Now, if you have animated overlays, then you want to go ahead and select media source. If you have static overlays, meaning non-animated, you want to go ahead and select image. So for this purpose, I'm going to select media source. I'm going to go ahead and label this starting soon. And then what you want to do is you want to go ahead and find the file on your computer. So I have my starting soon screen right here. I'm going to select that. And there's two very important checkbox that you want to go ahead and select. The very first one is loop. What this does is that make sure that your animation doesn't stop and it keeps going until you decide to change scenes. And the next one is you want to go ahead and select close file when inactive. Not only does this save the CPU, usage making sure that your stream runs at top shape at all times but it does make it easier to be able to maneuver between the scenes so make sure you click those two hit ok and now you can see we have our overlay now what you want to do is you want to right click on this you want to select transform and you want to select fit to screen now this is going to see here now this is starting to come together just by adding our overlay so the very next thing that we want to go ahead and add is going to be our camera so to be able to do that what we're going to do is First, we're gonna create a scene called camera. And the reason why I'm not adding it as a source just yet is because I want to be able to change my camera based on the scene that I'm utilizing, but by putting it as a scene, I'm just able to go ahead and pop it in as a source. You're gonna see how easy this is, and it's gonna save you a lot of time in the future. So what you wanna do first, you wanna hit plus sign again, you wanna type in camera, and this is going to bring a scene just like this. So go ahead and add your camera. What you want to do is you want to select this plus sign. You're then going to select the video capture device. And then you're going to go ahead and label this the name of your device. For my example, I have a Sony 5100. So I'll go ahead and label it that. You simply click OK. And now it's going to go ahead and ask you to select the device that you want to go ahead and utilize. So simply select the device from the drop down menu. Hit OK. And now you're going to see that you have your camera displayed just like I have it here now. Now, so what we simply want to do is now you want to come back to your starting soon screen and we're going to go ahead and add the scene of the camera that we just went ahead and created. So you click on the plus sign and you're going to select the scene option and then you hit add existing and we'll select the camera option. This is going to bring it out full screen and what we simply want to do is you want to just go ahead and drag the corners until we size it to where we need to be. Now you may be asking how do you have two cameras side by side? And it's simply because we went the route of creating the camera as a scene instead of creating it as a source, right? So now we have more flexibility to the customization of how we display our camera in each scene that we have. So what we simply want to do is if it doesn't fit, you have the option to hold the Alt key on your keyboard and you're able to go ahead and crop it to the size that you want so that it fits where you want it to live, all right? And then once you have your camera in place, what you simply want to do next is go ahead and add a countdown timer. Now, I went ahead and made a separate video on this on how to add a countdown timer in the easiest and fastest way possible to your stream to start building up that excitement and that hype before you go live. So you can click the card of this, of this video or you can wait until the end where I send you over to that video so you can go ahead and continue to enhance the production of your stream. So the very next thing that we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and add a gameplay screen, right? So the gameplay is where you're going to be playing the game. Uh, this is where you're going to be interacting. You can have a just chatting screen. So that's what we want to go ahead and create now. So as you can see here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and select the game. So you can see here, here's going to be the gameplay 
um, where it's directly on my console. So to be able to get your console displayed on OBS, you are gonna need a capture card. You can use an Elgato to be able to accomplish this. So what we simply want to do is, I'm gonna go ahead and hide this for the time being, but what we wanna select is the plus sign. And once you select the plus sign, you select the video capture device. And here you're gonna type in just video capture device. And then what you can do is, it's gonna give you the option to select the device you wanna utilize. So for this example is the Elgato Game Capture HD. And you're gonna see here that it's gonna go ahead and pop up uh, for me, just like this in full screen. If it's bigger than what it needs to be, you right click, hit transform, and then you want to go ahead and hit fit to screen. All right, so now that we have that in place, so what we wanna do next is we wanna go ahead and add our camera. So to be able to do that, we'll follow the same process we just took for our starting soon. We're gonna go ahead and hit plus sign, we're gonna to come to scene, and we're gonna go ahead and add existing and select camera. We're gonna hit okay, and that's gonna go ahead and bring up our camera just like this. And we'll follow the same process. We'll size this down to our liking of where we want it to be. But one of the things I recommend is to keep it pretty big for the time being, because I'm gonna show you guys a little trick to be able to do this a lot faster. So once I have the camera added, the next thing I want to do is I wanna go ahead and add my webcam overlay if you have one. So we'll select the plus sign. I'm gonna select media source because it is animated. I'm gonna name this webcam. I'm gonna hit okay, and then I'm gonna go ahead and find the file on my computer. So you can see here I have it face cam. I'm gonna make sure I select loop and close file when active. remember that, and I'm gonna select okay. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna lock my camera so it stays put, and now I'm gonna go ahead and customize this here so that way it's hovering over just where I want it to be. So I'll put it this here, and then what I'll do is that I'll keep it right where I want it and then I'll switch back over to the camera and just keep adjusting this until you get it right to where you want it. And then I'm gonna show you what you're able to do once that is done. So let's say that that's where I want it. Remember, if you need to crop it, hold the Alt and then you're able to bring it in. So let's say this is where I want it. So what I wanna do now is on my keyboard, I wanna select Control. I wanna click on the webcam, click on the camera. I wanna right click and select Group, right? So you wanna go ahead and select both and then you wanna select group selected items. Now you can label it, but what this does is when you group it is that now you're able to move everything together without having to resize the other. Now I can resize it together and put it exactly where I want it to be. And then I can go ahead and lock the group and now I'm good to go. And you can see here, now I have my webcam added onto my gameplay screen. Now the very next thing that I wanna show you guys is your intermission. And then I'll dive into showing you how to add a stinger transition, which is this effect that happens when I switch in between scenes. To be able to accomplish this, what we want to do is we'll add our intermission overlay just as we've done everything else. We'll select media, we'll add it in there. Same thing, we'll add our camera, we'll add our gameplay, and that's pretty much it there. And so now what I want to show you is how to go ahead and add these stinger transitions is what they're called when you're transitioning between scenes. So to be able to go ahead and do that, you want to come to the right hand side here where it says scene transition. Now OBS is going to give you some right out of the gate. You can hit add slide and then you hit OK. And now you can do left, right, up, down, hit OK. And now what's gonna happen is you can see here how it slides to the left or to the right based on what I select. But if you have a custom transition that you want to add, you wanna make sure you select Stinger, then you come to this little gear icon, you select Properties, and here you'll be able to go ahead and find your computer for where you have that Stinger transition, and then you'll be able to go ahead and add it in there. And once you have it added, you're gonna be able to see everything that happens here just like I have it where I'll switch in between and it says the Kirby Stream experience, giving you the opportunity to be able to have that flexibility and it adds to the production of your streams. So if you follow along so far, your stream should be coming together and starting to look professional, but you're not done yet as there's a little bit of touches you wanna do to be able to make your stream stand out. So you can start by watching this video right here where I show you how to add a countdown timer to OBS Studio to create excitement before your stream. And once you wrap up that video, go ahead and check out the other OBS Studio videos on my channel to help you level up your stream. And as always, if you got value from today's video, make sure to subscribe to show your appreciation. I'll see you guys in the next video. And remember, together we all can thrive.